On this episode of Still Loading, we play with our Marios. Wahoo! Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new episode of the Still Loading Podcast. I am your host, Josh Koval. It is episode three of 2023, or sorry, episode three of Mario Month 2023, and we are talking today about new Super Mario Bros. a Wii. And uh, joining me today are two first-time guests of the show. This whole Mario Month has been like uh, all over the place with pre- returning guests and new to Actually, I think... Now that I'm really thinking about this, I'm pretty sure every guest has been a returning guest for Mario Month. So this is fantastic. Two first-time guests on the show. Uh, kicking it off first, I am joined by Chazzy from the Side Project Podcast. Chazzy, yeah. how are you doing today? I am awesome, man. I am awesome. It has been a long day of working on various things, and I'm stoked to continue working and be here and talk about one of my favorite franchises as a whole, just anything Mario, really, but to talk about New, new Super Mario Bros. Wii. I am a, a big fan of New Super Mario Bros. franchise uh, as a whole, uh, one that uh, I don't think enough people talk about, so I'm stoked to be here. Thank you for coming on. It's been a long time coming to have you on the show. We've been talking about this for like over a year and I'm always like, I'll figure out a way eventually. And then I remember you talking about how much you like Mario. I'm like, oh shit, I should reach out to Chazzy for this one. So I'm glad we're finally able to make this work. Uh, And the second guest joining us, the other new uh, first time guest is Jared from the Play Along podcast. Jared, how are you doing today? Dude, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. It's been a long time coming. Same thing, man. We've talked for a while about like coming on and guest appearances and whatnot. So uh, super honored to be here. Thanks for having me, man. And talking about Mario. I mean, who doesn't who doesn't love Mario? Come on. I mean, if you don't, you're a you're a communist. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea how the two correlate. Actually, it would make more sense if you like Mario, you're a communist because he dresses in red. But you know what? We're not we're fucking That's true. semantics. That's true. <laughs> is Mario secretly? A, well, anyway, Wait, that's uh, the title. Is Mario a communist? Is Mario a communist? He could be. Uh, like, he could be. I bet you there is probably a video essay out there somewhere where someone, hopefully as a joke, looks at all the canon of Mario and decides, well, here's how Mario is a communist and breaks down you know comrade what? I Mario. Be, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I'm, he, I'm he just for, gives for coins us. out to everybody. <laughs> for us California natives, I, I was gonna, I was gonna make a joke. I'm, I'm looking at all my Mario stuff over here. I was gonna make a joke about him. Uh, being being a blood because he wears a lot of red. You mentioned the red. Oh, that's he's right. also you don't want to walk into the wrong side of town. <laughs> exactly, you know? exactly. But I mean, he's also. A, I mean, Jared, you know, being in California as well, he's he's rocking the red and the blue, so he's partying with both sides over here. He's blood and crazy. Oh, that's you know? that's a dangerous <laughs> game. That's a dangerous <laughs> game right there. He's playing both. He's playing the middle. He's trying to. He's trying to he's make sure he's got sides. both sides. Yeah. So every he's time he a, comes to California, he's good on either set. You know. <laughs> right. Exactly. He's the mediator between the blue toads and the red toads. Exactly. Hey, That's what it is. There it he's is. Bringing everybody together. There it is. There we go. Man, we got philosophical right off the right out of the gate on this episode. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so happy to have both of you on it. And Jared, I you haven't heard this yet, but I did shout you out on the Pokemon episode. I I didn't I referenced right. that you had to drop out last minute. So this is like your official first time on the show, even though you had a special shout out on Pokemon Gen One, which would have only been a couple weeks ago at the time. By mm-hmm. the time this comes out. But yes, we are here. We have all gathered here on this internet call to talk about New Super Mario Bros. Wii. And to start off this episode, like I have done with all the Mario Month episodes, I want to hear about some of your personal recollections. So uh, since I started with Chazzy first, Jared, we're going to throw it over to Jared here. Jared, what are your personal recollections of New Super Mario Bros. Wii? Yeah, so I played this quite significantly later after its release if i remember mm-hmm. correctly it came out around 2009 or so right that's sure exactly that's the year it came out 2009 oh, yeah. um and I, I had said a little bit before we started the call that for me i was always kind of like a generation before so i was getting to a lot of stuff a little bit later so mm-hmm. 2009 is the year that i got my xbox 360 and at that point i picked up things like bioshock mass effect 
modern warfare like i was i was set with games so that's where a lot of my focus was uh i had a wii before but a lot of my games i played were like zeldas and pokemons and then i ended up joe breaking one so i can play like all the old school uh, gba ones and everything but it wasn't until 2013 2014 that i actually bought and played super mario bros wii for the first time and i had dabbled in the ds one before which i i really enjoyed and it was kind of like a a reskin or a reimagining of this classic formula but with the new one and we'll definitely get into it but the big hook was multiplayer and like oh, playing yeah. this game with friends and the chaos and the anger it like it almost became like a party game it became yes. like uh smash bros or a mario party like we would bring people together and we would play this game and there'd just be so much chaos with it but i just fell in love with that game and the new version of it too i i can feel you on uh the multiplayer thing and we will go into that we that is that is going to be a huge talking point for this oh, yeah. but in this in this episode but i want to throw it over to chazzy now chazzy what are your yeah. personal recollections with new new super mario bros Wii? well i know you said we're gonna talk about it in a minute but i just also want to second the multiplayer was something that i was gonna bring <laughs> yeah. up as as well i guess i'll third that since you you seconded it but uh so the multiplayer was definitely a, an aspect of new super mario bros Wii. but i'm actually the opposite where i played um New Super Mario Bros. Wii, it came out around my birthday. It came out November 15, 2009. My Ooh, birthday's nice. on the 4th of November. So it came out around my birthday, around that time, and I was stoked for it. I was ready for it. Um, I didn't play the the one on, uh, what did it come out on again? The, it the came DS. out on the DS, yes. right? The DS, yeah, the yeah. DS. I didn't play that one until after I played the Wii one. Oh, and interesting. Then I, I, went, I went back, and I was like, okay, I, I love this. I got to check the, the DS one out. And I went mm. back, and I played it because I didn't have a DS. I actually... At the time, my girlfriend at the time actually got me a DS. She got me, um, I think it was actually, I played it like way later. I believe she might have even got me a 3DS and it was like the Legend of Zelda limited edition one. It was like black with the oh, gold. Oh, uh, yes. gold yeah, mouse, yeah, I, I know. And yeah. Then, yeah, and I, that's when I went back and I was like playing other games and doing this and that. And then that's when I started playing those and got into those even more. So my entry into this new franchise was actually with new super mario bros Wii, and mm -hmm. i just loved it man i mean there's so many different aspects of it i'm a giant fan of like the 2d marios and i felt like it was a time for that to come back on a home console because the only way we had that was through handhelds yeah, and i was never a giant handheld fan that's another reason why I, I didn't play the other one it wasn't because i didn't like mario or anything i'm a huge mario fan that's why i'm here but uh <laughs> it was just because i'm not a giant fan of handhelds so new super mario bros Wii was where it was at for me and it was just like a good time in my life i was stoked to have mm -hmm. the the 2d back and i guess they call this basically 2.5d which i didn't know that until yeah yeah like i have i have some uh I have like a wiki in front of me just to like certain things that I, I want to bring up so I don't forget, you know, mm -hmm. and it was actually in this moment before we started talking where I was like, they call this 2.5 D. Like, how did I not know this the entire time that they call this a 2.5 <laughs> D Mario platformer? So weird that that just, uh, uh, you know, didn't didn't come across my my uh, my my table. But but yeah, this this was my first entry into this franchise and I was stoked for it. And like he said, we'll save it for later. But the multiplayer was something I was going to bring up too, being able to play that with uh, my brother and with my uh, girlfriend at that time. And uh, just loved it, man. Just I loved it. Being able to... I'll save it. I'll save the multiplayer part. I'll save it. Well, actually, we can uh, we can dive into it right now because my recollection, since I'm throwing it back to me, even though I already seconded the multiplayer, since I'm throwing it back to me, I'm quadrupling it now. We're going to talk <laughs> about multiplayer because my recollections are multiplayer as well. Uh, I did it. So full disclosure, listeners, out of all the games covered in Mario Month this year, this is the only one I did not have time to beat, Be you know. Unfortunately, yeah. you know, being a father, be working full time, trying to yeah. play the other games for the show, as yeah. well as upcoming games and doing other stuff. Uh, I got lot. it is a lot. I got yeah. about to the third world, though. I, I figured I did. I was able to play enough that I had, could kind of get a taste of the mechanics. Mm. Uh, I will say this game is really fucking difficult compared to the ds game the ds game is a walk in the park and especially uh, if you're playing this multiplayer it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it makes this yeah. game impossible it yeah, is a really definitely. difficult game. And so my recollections of it is I remember getting this, not for myself, my friends had a mm -hmm. Wii 
And we would we we had this thing. I don't think I've even told these stories. Actually, I might have referenced it in passing. So when I was in college, I had a group of friends, and I'm still friends with all of them. We just obviously now have our own lives. But right. while we were in college, we had this thing called Pizza Tuesday, and so creative naming. We would uh, <laughs> meet up every Tuesday and hang out and eat pizza. Whoa. Well, I was going to ask. So it's Pizza Tuesday, but was there pizza involved? He's like, he's uh, like, no, no, we actually got sandwiches. No pizza, we just... and it wasn't a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. It was actually Stromboli's. Yeah, exactly. It was at least in the Italian realm, but but we didn't right. actually get pizza. We just thought Pizza Tuesdays was a catchy name. <laughs> Sometimes we would, you know, throw it in with some pasta, some uh, exactly. papadillas or hey, papadillas or whatever they're called. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but no, it was a. Uh, Actually, I think the only thing we really switched up, we would go from regular pizzas to Sicilian style pizzas. You ever have Sicilian oh, pizza? Oh, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I'm Italian. Oh, so and I have it. Wait, <laughs> enlighten me. Am yes. I missing something? Um, it's so like Sicilian it's like pizzas. It's like square. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's, uh, okay, okay. So I don't know if, because I, I always hear from other podcasters that California doesn't have as good pizza as out on the East Coast. I don't know if that's true or not. No, I yeah, can't no, say No, it's 100% for certain. true. It is 100%, it's 100% true. My family's, yeah. from, so, my family's from Brooklyn. We're Italian, migrated here from Brooklyn, New York, grew up there, and then came here to California. So I will second that like crazy, man. <laughs> There's yeah, nothing it, like New York pizza. It's so. I mean, East Coast pizza in general. I. I mean, New York, uh, Philly has really good pizza too. Boston has mm, decent pizza. Yeah. I will say this is a bit of a hot take. I don't like Chicago deep dish. I don't like it because they, they flip the sauce and the cheese. That you know, the cheese. Like a hot take. I feel like people yeah. love deep dish pizza. Yeah. See, yeah, do. Sicilian is kind of deep dish esque. It's not, but it's kind of like that because okay. essentially what it is, it's like. Think of like half inch to three quarter inch thick crust, but like the mm. bottom of it is too. Like the whole base is like a half inch oh, so to three quarter inch crust, thick. You're talking like the, the whole, entire the whole thing. Pie. You're basically yeah. eating like a piece of bread, like a, like a slice of bread that's baked deliciously. Mm. And it's uh Ooh. with uh yeah. like and with like sauce and cheese. It's just it's really good. It's it's nice too. It's a little more expensive, but it's more filling. So like if you right. what would take maybe three large pizzas to to feed a group of people, you might only need a Sicilian because it's gonna mm. fill people up Big. It's very quickly. Bigger, yeah. Yeah. It's similar yeah. uh well, I mean, I guess Detroit pizza is similar if you were saying it correctly, but this just turned into a pizza episode, but Detroit know, style relevant Italian is- <laughs> plumbers, Mario, Mario, it's all Mario the same. yeah, we'll, we'll circle it back. We'll circle it back, but I've, <laughs> I've never had it. I don't know. I don't know if you guys ever had, but I've never had Detroit style pizza, which is also like a thick crust rectangular pizza, no. but they use, they use Wisconsin brick cheese for their cheese. I hear it's phenomenal, but I've never, I've never had, had it. So it. I can't, I can't so say delicious. And now I can't have it because I've developed an a, 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 an allergy to, to dairy a couple years back. Oof. So oh, yeah. now can you take yeah, like those can't. dairy pills? My like brother can't have pills? dairy. The yeah, lactate. I don't know because it's not like a stomach mm. thing. It's an actual skin uh, thing, and it's like rashes oh, and oh, hives, and yeah, it's like a whole thing. And it developed like I want to say like maybe <laughs> close to like thirteen to fifteen years now. It wasn't even I wasn't mm. born with it. It just developed. it just kind of happened. Yeah, yeah, and it was just like your body goes through changes, and that's just what my body chose apparently. That sucks. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so uh back to Pizza Tuesday, <laughs> the most original <laughs> name on the planet. Uh we would we would always a lot of it we would play Smash Brothers, you know, whether it's yep. m- melee or brawl. Lord. But when this game came out, I remember I remember the advertising blitz for it was like uh, you know, oh, you can play with four players. So we my friend I... got it, and I remember we played it. I played it only once or twice because at that point uh, I was like, I don't like playing multiplayer because I hate losing. I don't even care if it's a co-op thing, but like, since as we know, you can dick over your friends in this game and it's hysterical, but I would never quite get mad, but it would always kind of like put a damper on my fun. So I just watched other people play. So my personal recollection with it is watching my friends get mad at each other at pizza (laughs) Tuesday. So I had the slice of pizza in my hand. I'm like, you guys are fucking idiots. As I'm (laughs) taking it. (laughs) You're having a great time. They're yelling at each other. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So let's let's use this as an entry in to talk about the multiplayer. Uh, mm-hmm. Do either of you guys have anything you want to shout out specifically about it? Like, just what do you want to talk about with the multiplayer? Yeah, or like, memories? Go, ahead, just, go ahead. Yeah, like what you were just talking about, like it kept the same formula of what Mario is, but 
you would think that like adding more people to this would kind of, you know, defeat the purpose or diverge away from what made that game the game, but it's mm-hmm. still Mario. And I think what helps is they made a lot of these levels significantly bigger compared to things yes. like the original and compared to like Super Mario World and everything. The levels are bigger. So that yeah. larger scale definitely helps to take into consideration one, two, three, four other players. But yeah, it like it kept this it kept the same DNA of what made Mario Mario, but like added this not intentional competitive twist because it's supposed to be cooperative. It's a cooperative. No, it, experience. It, it was a little intentional. Like I was reading in an Awada asks oh, interview. Yeah, they they knew it was going to make people competitive. There's also because oh, there's awesome. a <laughs> excuse me, like what is it like the battle mode where there's a coin collect thing where whoever collects yep. the most coins, yeah. but. It doesn't tell you how many coins you or your competitors collect. So you are constantly under the in this state of panic of wondering oh, awesome. do I have enough to to beat the to beat everyone? Additionally, yeah. they also anticipated for co-op because when, when they were talking about some of the hidden uh things you can get, mm-hmm. like either either to get a one up or some hidden blocks. You would yeah. either have to, you could do it solo. You would either have to know where a hidden block was and do like a triple jump into it. Or if you played cooperatively, you could get four players to stack up on top of each other and then you'd be yeah. able to get to this one thing. So that way you w- would all get the benefit of it. Stuff like yeah. that. So there there was a lot of intentional design added to mm. not only like what you said, Jared, with the levels, but also in the competitive nature. Right. Um and they, they, one of the things that was kind of cool about the a lot of the asks interview was there was you could feel the camaraderie of the developers because they constantly kept talking about how they would get mad at each other over diff, over <laughs> play testing the game, uh, stuff <laughs> like so that. Cool. Actually, um, sorry, one last thing before I throw it over to you, Chassie, to talk about yeah. multiplayer because I, I I feel like I'm monopolizing a bit of the time here. No, Did you guys know? I I learned about this in this a lot of ask interview. There is a company. That it's I'm it's obviously under Nintendo's umbrella. Nintendo owns it. And wow. hold on, I wrote it down. Where where did I write it down at? I can't even find it. Um, it was the Mario Club company, Mario Club Ltd. They are a test, they are a company specifically for testing Nintendo games. I didn't I had, know this. I didn't I've know heard, it either. I've heard of it, but I don't think I really knew what it was. They utilized the Mario Club company for for testing other games so from what i saw in the little blurb in the a lot of s article they because it gives a little segment like explaining you know like a like a little f- a cliff note or a little footnote about certain right. things and they explain that mario club tests nintendo games so i'm assuming it, te- it they test more than mario games but i'm not 100 percent certain mm-hmm. uh but at least in this instance they were testing new super mario bros wii and they would basically uh Ch- they challenge the testers to come up with super moves because there's we'll get into it in a little bit there's like the mm. super skill guide and there's like the super yeah. guide and the super skill guide so mm. that's it's this, the, just a i mean I, we'll go into it in more detail but basically the super guide was the a proto like here's how you beat the level and then the super yeah. skills were like these really challenging things you could do that only the best of the best players could pull off and so they challenged the mario club to come up with a bunch of these which i thought was kind of cool oh wow yeah, it was pretty much a bunch of the devs showing off like the crazy yeah. things they can do that's pretty, pretty much, much what it yeah, was yeah. They ended yeah, up with like over 60 that. of these moves too, which is wild. Yeah. I, I didn't know about all these until reading the Iwata asks, but it was just, yeah, I and had I had no, no idea, idea about this Mario cool. club company. It was so weird. Yeah. I've heard the name, but I didn't, I don't think I knew what it was in depth. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So Chazzy, what are your, what are your uh, thoughts and comments on the multiplayer? Yeah. Well, I've got, uh, for the listeners, I'm pulling oh, it up it for is. you guys, but I actually, yeah, I really have oh, that classic I've actually, red I've case. Got it, I love I've it. got it in my background, the classic red case. I'm holding up the, oh, uh, what the new f- Super Mario oh, Bros. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> there we for, go. Jared, where's yours, man? What's going on here, yeah. dude? Hey, here's like, here's a D&D book. Uh, does this uh, count? <laughs> <laughs> this is holding up something. He's just grabbing whatever he can. I've got this in case anybody wants to see it. <laughs> i got Mario Galaxy yeah, no, 2 I've got in my this, hand uh, as well. So there we go. <laughs> yeah, I've got a bunch up here. I won't waste the time, but I got I got a bunch of my favorite ones in my background and everything uh if you oh, if you cool. watch my pod you'll you'll be able to s- uh, spot them out but i do have the new super mario bros we uh case here mm. and i do love it it's the red one and everything and then you're right you mentioned earlier about like the multiplayer 
uh, one of the, the, the like standpoints or the, the marketing points was the four player thing. And you're absolutely right. It says it right here in big, mm-hmm. bold letters up to four players right away. And then it has uh, Mario toad, Luigi, and then another toad, a uh, little, little uh, like graphic, like a little emoji, I guess you could say to, uh, you know, use some of today's uh, terminology, but this, uh, this game, I think, was it, was it the first 2D, 2.5D platformer of Mario that was multiplayer? Yes. Yeah. At, so, at, the to- at the time, right? It was, yes, right? Yeah. It was. And yeah. there there was if in early like marketing materials for Super Mario Bros New Super Mario Bros DS, you could mm-hmm. see there they intended to include it in there, but it uh, I guess most likely due to the techni- due to yeah, the technical limitations, limitations they right. couldn't do it. Um, right. or maybe even design limitations because on that tiny of a screen, it might be hard to have yeah, two players show up at the same yeah. time. Screen right. size makes a huge difference. Um, 100%. 100%. And if, especially for a game like this mm-hmm. with everything that you have going on, you four players going all over the place, jumping up high. Some are going lower. You're jumping left, right. It's almost like a... a um, like a Smash Bros. There's everybody going everywhere on the screen yeah. all at the same time, you know, as the screen is moving, uh, side scrolling on top of it. Um, there's even, I believe, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, I believe there's even some, uh, like every Mario game has where the screen is automatically moving, like those levels where yeah. the screen mm-hmm. automatically moves and you're still got four players jumping all over the place while the screen's moving all at the same <laughs> yeah. time. So it makes sense to have it on a home console. And that, the reason I asked if it was the, first mario game that was you know mm-hmm. four players multiplayer mm-hmm. like this because that's what i remember in my mind being one of the selling points and being one of the exciting things for me and one of the reasons why i wanted it because i love mario games i love the fact that nintendo tends to have these um you know they still do the couch co-op style games that yeah. most consoles don't do and i remember always wanting to share those things with my brother with my friends with my girlfriend at the time because i was in a long i think it was like five year relationship at that mm. time so we spent a lot of time playing several several games together yeah mostly yeah. mostly mario because mario has those kind of games and so i remember always wanting to share those things so that was definitely like a highlight for me of like this it's this new it's, it's new mario game it's multiplayer for the first time and it's 2d at the time because again i'm going to keep saying 2d even though it's 2.5d technically yeah but you know, it's, it's, it's 2, 2d essentially it's 2d you, you i've never say 2D. heard anybody say 2.5d so i like <laughs> <I'm>, like, <laughs> like it, that's the technical thing but it's just easier yeah. to say 2d like you yeah it's, exactly it's, it rolls yeah, off the it, tongue easier too. It you does. Sign- and this was the first. Uh, and this was the first two D home console game since Super Mario World. Yes, I know technically years. that's crazy. Yeah, like yeah. technically you have Super Mario World two, but that's more of a Yoshi game. Like even out, yeah. Yeah, like true, outside true. of Japan, that wasn't. Or sorry, outside of North America, that wasn't Super Mario World two. It was a completely different game. Yes, I think exactly. it was just called Yoshi's Island in Japan, if I remember correctly. Yeah. But I, yeah, I'd have to double and, check with that. Since you bring up Yoshi, the the ability to yeah. to, have, to have so many different Yoshis and all the Bro, different colored people Yoshis, people just right. <laughs> Yeah, she's in the just Yoshi's oh, everywhere. Just, just everywhere. I love it, dude. <laughs> that was a good it, Yoshi voice. Thank that you, was, man. That was thank a good you, Yoshi. Man. I am the voice uh, of Yoshi, in case you guys didn't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> but with the, with the multiplayer too, you know, we talked about this like competitive aspect to it, but it's interesting because having another person almost like gives you an extra life. Because when you right. fall and die, as long can, as one person's alive, you can continue the game. You yes. guys like you turn to a little bubble and then you have to pop each other's bubble. And I exactly. remember there'd be so many situations where friends were like, I'm not gonna pop you, I'm not gonna bring you back in. And you're <laughs> shaking the Wii remote, trying to like fucking pop me. I need to get back yes. in. Yes, or in the same vein, there's those moments where like you die and you're like, You better stay alive, wait for me to exactly. come back. Like I, just wait for the bubble, just stay alive and long enough to wait for the bubble. You can pop me back. Like it's those moments too. Like if you're like oh, in a man, castle so or so, you know what I mean? Oh man, I love it. It's it's so funny too because when I was playing it, I didn't know that if you when I first started playing it, I didn't know that when you shook the Wii mote, it would move the bubble closer to the yes. player who was still active. So I remember it was so tense just watching my bubble float across the screen. I was like, oh oh, it's getting close. Oh no, it's away now. Oh, right. no, 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 and just you start doing it, and you realize, oh, I kind of have control of this a little bit. Yeah, so a little, little bit. Yeah, little details that you may not realize at first until you continue playing the game and you start seeing more of the. Mechanics. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. 
Now, in speaking of some of the mechanics, uh, the, like we said, the things they added to this game, obviously Yoshi. Yeah. Yoshi was mm-hmm. new right. to this game compared to, not new to the series overall. Obviously, Yoshi first appeared in Super Mario World back on the Super Nintendo, but in but the new in the Super Mario version. Correct. In the new yeah, Super yeah. Mario Bros. series, this is the first time Yoshi appears. Additionally, they bring uh, they bring back, obviously, the Super, Mu- the Super Mushroom, the mm-hmm. Fire Mushroom, uh, obviously Invincible Mario, Mini Mario Returns, but they added three new power-ups to this game mm-hmm. yes. which is the ice mario yes. the propeller mario yes. and the penguin mario yes and i'm gonna hype penguin you up all of your hype man i love them i love all of them <laughs> well, they didn't the, bring back the giant mario i don't remember no, if that's the term or not no, which from doesn't Mar- surprise uh, from me the ds version yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it doesn't surprise because we we I, I had try from my life in gaming on for the new super mario bros episode which I know you guys haven't heard, but that's now two weeks old now. But Mm -hmm. we talk about how that power up kind of broke the game design, which is why if you play new Super Mario Bros on the DS, they don't let you use it a lot because it kind of ruins their level design because you can burst through every pipe and block. Yeah, Yeah, Mm -hmm. not only that, but it almost like doesn't really work with these levels because these levels are larger and a lot of it is platforms that are segmented between large gaps in the floor where you can mm-hmm. fall so there's less right. like just straight ground levels in this one so like right. the big mushroom almost fundamentally doesn't work in this format either yeah i gotta tell you though when i because like i said earlier when i first played new super mario bros Wii, i didn't play the ds version so there was mm. a moment where um when i first started playing this one i was actually waiting and looking for the uh the giant mushroom or whatever it's called mm. i don't remember and uh i was like waiting for it and i was like do they not put this one in here like i was like because i never got to try it so at the time you know what i mean so i was just like i want right. to know what it's like but you know of course i went back and played it later and then i understood just like you said like it doesn't really fit this this right. iteration of it you know yeah uh and it, we're in speaking of uh we were you know sorry i i meant to bring this up before we talked about the power-ups but when we were talking about the multiplayer and the bubbles specifically Mm. that was a mechanic that they talked about in the awada s that solved a lot of different problems you know it solved Mm. the problem of how do you keep all the players together on the screen at the same time you know that because someone's going to lead the the screen and lead the level and it's Mm. going to leave other players behind so how do you keep everyone up to at the same pace when they right. get too far behind, they pop into a bubble. They they get put into a bubble, and then they move on up to the nearest uh, to the beginning of the level, um, or to the person who's in the yeah. in the lead. I should the, say. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say the, the the bubble is so interesting. Like it feels so natural, and it just kind of like works when you're yeah. we're looking at it and you're thinking about it conceptually. Like it doesn't necessarily have yeah. any connection to Mario lore. It's just like a bubble. But then if you think about it, like, yeah, that's just, Wait. you get too far behind, you bubble, you float in, you fall off, you bubble, you float to your guy, you know, it just kind of works. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong though. I believe it does in a sense, have a connection to the Mario franchise in, in uh, oh. Yoshi's Yoshi's Island, right? Yes. Uh, Cause oh, when right. baby, Cause Mario baby Mario po- pops yeah. off. Yeah. And you listen to that obnoxious crying noise. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the only thing. It's so I feel like they they did that on purpose though, because it does mm-hmm. make you go like, oh my god, yeah. like I have to get him back. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I have to shut game, this like, baby PTSD up. PTSD flashbacks. <laughs> exactly. Seriously. But I believe Dude, that, I, I believe that's the first iteration of the bubble, that, and they brought that it makes back sense. Yeah, I didn't yeah. think about that. Yeah. Yeah. I when I first played uh Yoshi's Island, I you know, I, I loved the game when I played through, but now whenever I watch people play that, even though I didn't play Yoshi's Island as a kid, I played it as an adult, I still get PTSD flashbacks of that baby <laughs> crying because it's just it is so it's it's like a it's like nails on a chalkboard. It yes, just it, it is it pierces imagine, through. Imagine anything. if they brought it to uh, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, but they just like, pitched it higher for like adult Mario's voice, <laughs> and he's just more. crying as you. Because <laughs> I think oh, if, when you shake the Wii mode, it, it Mario will like make noises, right? Like if you don't yeah. shake the Wii like, mode, then it doesn't or do something anything. like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that was it's it's wild. So it the power ups though, the new yes. ones like we said, ice propeller and penguin. I yeah. actually personally love the penguin one. I don't know yes. why, mm-hmm. 
but it just, it really works for me. Being able to slide through the episode, uh, through the episodes, mm. <laughs> being through, able to slide through the levels, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it, it's, it yeah. adds like another, another twist to it, it. Another, another new mechanic, another new power up. I love it. Like that's one of the things I was actually really excited to talk about on here was mm. the new power ups and the introduction, because they also moved forward in this franchise into yeah. other, other franchises. And I, I love it. The penguin one. I mean, I love all of them. I'm not going to lie. Like the propeller one is awesome too. The oh, ice, so the ice Mario is, I love the ice Mario. That's actually one of my favorites but i may be getting ahead of, of some bullet points of yours so i'll go I'll no 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 you can go thing. into it we're just we're talking okay, about power-ups okay. in general here so feel free go yeah for it. just i mean you're right though the pang the penguin mario one is just fun i just find it fun can you yeah. also throw ice as penguin mario yeah uh, i don't know about as penguin mario but i the my one criticism with the ice flower and maybe the controls of this game or maybe i shouldn't say one one i'll probably come up with others as we're kind of talking but like <laughs> i don't to pick up an item, you have to the shake like, controller. You have to you have to like twist the 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 Wii yeah. up like this, mm-hmm. yeah. and that always bothered me because it's like it like I just want to pick up the item I like how you used to with the run yeah. button like it it, it wasn't yeah. broken. You didn't well, need to do that. I think if you played like on the uh, what, what was it back then the Wii Pro controller, you mm. avoided that okay. scenario. I think which I yeah, actually. That would make sense. I, even though I know that like the, it's the Wii, so it's like a lot of the games, the feature is having like the Wii mode and doing all, all this stuff. But I'm not going to lie. I always preferred like the Wii Pro Controller or just the, the yeah. other one or whatever it was called. Like there was like two different versions of them, I believe. But mm-hmm. I, I, I always preferred those. Like I would, of course, try every game with multiple ones. I'm just kind of that person. I always like tried them, which was with the Wii, Wii remote. Ones, and then, yeah. The, yeah, and see which one felt better to me, you know. Um, and I'm not going to lie. I would oftentimes go to the Wii Pro Controller. Mm-hmm. That's use those. Yeah. That's, Sorry, go ahead, Jared. I would say I remember using that because there was like the the smaller one and then there was like the large one too. There was two of them. Right. But I remember a lot of games you couldn't. Like they didn't even give you the option. Like you had yeah. to use Wii yeah. Remote with some yeah, games. Yeah, there was. There was. Yeah, there and was like I don't mind that to an extent, mm-hmm. but the the Nintendo has had an issue with their controller development where they will design a controller that is specific for one game. Like, yeah. like yeah. Super Mario 64 it is very clear that the N64 controller was designed to play that game. Right. And while that controller ended up working pretty well with some other games, obviously, you know, the Banjo-Kazooie games, GoldenEye, Perfect Dark, you you, you know, DK64, you name it, any of the uh, Melee, or not Melee, I'm sorry, the original Smash, um, you name it, it works pretty well. But... It, it it ended up hurting some other games where that since that controller form factor was so strange, it did hurt some other games on the N64. Yeah. And likewise, mm-hmm. it's even more pronounced on the Wii, where I would argue the Wii modes, I don't want to say they were specifically designed for this game, but they work best in the Galaxy games. Like they yeah. really mm-hmm. work super, super well in Mario yeah, Galaxy, where the motion controls are not intrusive. It's very intuitive. They're easy to pick up and play. Mm-hmm. Versus with this, it's a little bit to the detriment of the game yeah. where it's making you use motion controls on a gameplay style that really doesn't and on the pacing of the game doesn't really right. work well with motion controls. In fact, I even found myself playing when I was playing it. I don't and I don't know if it was my Wii mode or if it was maybe the game itself. I'm thinking leaning more towards the Wii mode, but there was a tiniest fraction of input delay when I would do the shake because sometimes it wouldn't read the the yeah. the gyro wouldn't read the the yeah. shake. So I would try yeah. to pick up an item and I'm like, what the fuck? Why is this not picking up? And right. then I would die. And I'm like, yeah. I was doing what I needed to do. What the hell? Yeah. I mean uh, yeah. and I I don't think it was intentional by the developers by any means by Nintendo, but no. A lot of that and a lot of that shaking sometimes like added to the adrenaline the excitement too you're shaking to trying to get popped and you're trying to yeah. shake to pick yeah. up things and it's not going up but no i, I totally see what you're saying it, yeah. it's almost in some circumstances where the motion controls aren't the main gimmick of it or at least mm-hmm. they're they're less it seems to shine more like with galaxy yeah. there's motion controls but they're not a extremely prominent feature in the game too like you use it to spin around you could use the pointer to grab like the start bits and everything but in this where it's so uh, tied to picking up things and and 
getting your bubble popped, it it does feel frustrating sometimes. Well, yeah. I think it's it's more or less does the motion controls complement the gameplay design, the gameplay mm. style? It like it is yeah. pretty essential in Galaxy because the spin attack is used by the motion mm. controls, but it's not intrusive because you you just have to shake. Like you don't have to aim on the screen, you don't have to do anything specific, mm. and the simple shake it because on this game it's not just shaking your Wiimote you have to twist up the Wiimote it's a very specific motion if you're, if you're holding it you have to hold it sideways you have to yeah, hold it horizontally yeah it horizontally yeah. you have to now, twist it up yeah uh, Correct versus wrong, galaxy you don't is, have to yeah is this did we have the Wii Motion Plus at this point or did this come after I don't remember where that I lines up in the I don't know. remember either you I don't know what yeah. but let me I look it up like real we quick did but yeah. I, I and you're gonna I mean I don't remember enough like memories of that to remember like a distinguishable difference between the two but i feel like there there were because at, at first did, there was like the attachment and then it just it came built into the Wii yeah, it came built in yeah i had the a Wii motion in. plus was out in 2009 okay, okay. so the, it a was couple out months prior point. now i would say it most likely didn't it might not have taken that into account, especially like the Wii mm-hmm. Motion Plus wouldn't have really been needed for this, I would feel like, because from my understanding, the Wii Motion Plus helps with the accuracy of the Wiimote pointing at the screen, not necessarily the gyro reading mm-hmm. inside of it, you okay. know? So I could be completely wrong. So any listeners who, if you do know, feel free to write in and, and let me know and correct me, because I, mm-hmm. I, from my understanding, though, it was just the accuracy of you pointing at the screen, not necessarily yeah. the actual actual like vibrant like a uh, movement in the to yeah. check the motion on it um yeah. and so but I'm, I'm with you i think that the we the we controls work best when the if you if you're going to require motion controls it has to be built into the design of the game and it yeah. still has to be designed well like mm. fps is on the wii it was a cool idea <laughs> in concept but the problem is to look left and right you have to you know, look to the left of the screen and it's almost like a, it's almost like a mouse on a computer where you're like trying to move the screen all the way over to the left. So you have to, you know, like you click and drag and you hold the left side of the screen and eventually you'll get all the way to the left side of the screen when it goes yeah. all the way over there. It kind of reminds me of that movement. And so like, in my opinion, and I haven't played a lot of FPSs on the Wii, but yeah, I don't think I'm, the, I can't recall any actually at the moment. The Conduit the block, was their the, blacks, uh, the Black one. Ops uh, game was on the Wii too. The first Black Ops. And didn't it look horrible though? Oh my, yeah, it was terrible. Yeah. I remember it was terrible. Right? There was yeah. someone I forget. I don't know if they were a guest on my show or if I talked to them outside of it. Their first experience with like first person shooter multiplayer was on the Wii, and I went, oh my "What? God, that's wild." I know, <laughs> and it, I, I, and I genuinely, my reaction was not like, "Oh, you poor soul." I'm like, "That's interesting." <laughs> I no, want to know what that was like. I wild genuinely because that's want the to era know. with like 360 PS3. Yeah. You had Call of Duty. You had Resistance. You had things like Gears of War. Like there were, I mean, Gears of War isn't first person, but there was good shooters at yeah. the time on the yeah. other platforms. I mean, and that's crazy. Nintendo's Halo. online wasn't great. Halo <laughs> <It> still isn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I, how, how uh, that blows my mind. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and double check who it was because yeah. I feel bad. I can't, I remember vividly, but I just, I, I remember vividly someone telling me that it was like, that was their first experience with it. But I honest to God can't remember who it was. I'm going to feel mm-hmm. awful if they were on my show just like four months ago yeah. and be like, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> like, you just, There's like, a lot of yeah. podcasting that happens. There's okay. A lot it's going like, on. it's a lot easy. going on. Yeah, it is a lot, but no. To to bring it back to New Super Mario Bros. We like the motion yeah. controls for this. I don't mm. think a hundred percent work because it. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of times, and I, once again, it could have been my Wii Mote. So if if it didn't have the same issue with other people, if uh, if other players didn't have the same issue, it could have just been mm. with me. But uh, like trying to pick up items was never really the easiest for me with this. Um. And so while the ice flower was cool because then you could turn enemies into blocks and then you could jump on the blocks and they were essentially platforms. Or you could kick the blocks, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeet the blocks across the screen. So much fun. I love what I like. like, We talked about the penguin suit a little bit, but I love that penguin suit because yeah, yeah. In most of Mario games before, ice levels were such like a pain in the ass. And the penguin suit was just like, oh, this is easy. You just slide right through and it's nice. Yes. 
And, it, and yeah, I would I would always try to see how long I could go. And I mean, I think that's yep. kind of also the goal. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. They they build the, the level design is built for that. So you could try to yeah. keep going as long as you can and time your jumps correctly and avoid hitting a block in the middle of the air that that stunts your uh, stunts your flow. You know what I mean? I always loved those things. So I mean, you nailed it. You nailed it perfectly. Sliding on your stomach, going through the whole level like that is so fun. Much faster. Yeah, it's so fun. And I think specifically the reason why that is so fun because I uh, playing it just earlier this week. Um, when you get the penguin suit, there's a couple levels where you go down a hill and then it'll angle you up. It'll mm-hmm. go up to the top of a hill and you're like, I think I need to jump here, but you don't don't touch the jump button. Just keep the running button held down. And mm-hmm. it's a it's a it's almost like this wavy hill where you see like yes. uh, you're, you rise up. There's a gap. So you expect to jump. But if you don't, you keep on this interesting trajectory and yeah, it's I- almost kind of like it's not quite one of those audio uh, audio, sorry, auto Mario levels that you would see in like Mario Mm. maker where it's not quite that, but it's kind of similar where don't touch the controller. As soon as you start going, just see where this takes you still hold the controller to make sure. Obviously when you get to the end of the line, you might have to jump so you don't die, but for all intents and purposes, it was really fun to see how Mario would get through this level when you're not quite expecting him to. Mm, so I yeah. thought the level design for the, for the penguin suit was super cool. Yeah. The other power up that I thought was dope was the propeller Mario because right. yes, it allowed you to control your falls really well, or you could, you know, spiral straight down. There was a yeah. lot of stuff that they added to the level design in this that I noticed. Like for example, they added and specifically in the Wada S they talk about this, they added wind to the game where, you know, mm. there's other, there's other right. platformers, you know, that has the wind element of the wind mechanic where when you jump up, if the wind is blowing, it's going to force, it'll blow you away in a direction mm. you may not want to go. So they specifically added coins to the wind. So that way when a player sees the wind blowing, they don't automatically associate it with a negative thing. You're like, okay, well, right. I, oh, can't. I can grab some coins from doing exactly. This. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if you get a pow block, you can drop the pow block and all those coins that are floating in the air from the wind will drop. And mm. then you can collect yes. them all. So you can get them all at once. It was a really fun mechanic. Yeah. And I believe also when it was going back to when you were talking about like the, we, the Wii the mode and all that stuff, that is one of the mechanics where the Wii mode is utilized. If you're using the Wii mode, I believe if you shake it, when you have the propeller, uh, the propeller, uh, power up, you will mm-hmm. float up into the sky and then you can mm-hmm. keep shaking it and to kind of keep going and whatnot. I believe that was one of the mechanics circling back to the, you know, talk about the Wii mode and everything. I'm pretty sure you would have to like touch the ground first to be able to propel again or like bounce off a wall maybe yeah, there's there was something that you need to reset you slowly i think like, so oh, yeah i don't, I don't think you right back up if you get some yeah. momentum yeah something like that yeah you're right well and it was cool because if you had it you could do the slow fall like you were saying but say you wanted to say there's an enemy coming at you like in, you you won't have enough time to dodge it mm. you can hold the down button and it'll and mario will pretty much just dive bomb straight down like use a propeller to propel him straight down right. to wherever it is the yes. only problem is you have to be that. careful that you're not over a pit or something like that <laughs> oh, yeah. just fall yeah, yeah. right off of a ledge dude uh, i did that so many fucking times oh, i would see a guy that. coming and i would just panic dive and just go straight <laughs> into a pit <laughs> these new items also made the bosses a little more interesting too and mm-hmm. i this is one of my gripes and i think it's more in a modern mario than like playing this game for the first time when it came out because the bosses that you fight are the Koopalings, which at the moment, I don't think we had seen the Koopalings since Super Mario World. Super Mario World. Yeah. So we hadn't seen them for a while, but like at this point, a lot of the Marios going forward have the Koopalings of the boss. So they're not like super exciting bosses, but there is a boss where you fight um, Bowser Jr. in his little like clown car and you mm-hmm. use the propeller hat to get momentum up and then you slam down on top of him, which is really interesting and really interesting way of incorporating the new items into some of the boss fights. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, also with the propeller hat, I one of the things I've read in the Iwata Ask interview you would have no idea how long it took them to get the sound effect for the propeller hat. Really? Apparently, a that little <laughs> apparently they came up with 50, dinner, 50 plus iterations of that sound effect. 50 iterations of just the propeller. And they only proposed about 10 or 11 to Miyamoto for him to pick from. But they, they spent so much time working on just the propeller sound of this um it's 
it's it is imagine being wild. that team the propeller hat team just like staying late hours trying, yeah <laughs> those to get are the unsung play. hero heroes of game design man i yeah. I've, t- I've told the oh, story yeah. i've told the story before um when i was in college i went to school for video game design and simulation um, oh, awesome Nice. graduated with an associates but uh i haven't really done much with it uh yeah. but i it was still i, I love the course but my 3d design teacher the guy who was teaching us how to use maya and other 3d rendering yeah. software and shit like that he got offered a job this was before he was my professor he was offered to work on the madden games to work with nice. ea on the madden games mm-hmm. and you're thinking all oh, right that's a dream job you know you're working on a major franchise he turned it down because he was in, he would have been in charge of the grass. That's it. Oh, oh that's Jesus crazy. That's how how the grass reacts when a player steps on it, when there's wind blowing, how it affects what it's like with different weather conditions and shit like that. Yeah. So imagine tedious, your job eight hours. Sorry, it's game dev. So 16 hours yeah. a day. I was four, like, let's be four, real. They're not week. working normal hours. Yeah. <laughs> no. And all you are focused on is is grass no yeah that's, that's it. i feel like we yeah, take call. It, it take for granted like oh developers they make game but it's like this yeah. one person's job could be this very minute detail in a game that you'll overlook every time you go into it yeah i couldn't imagine doing that working on grass just all day long every day for weeks straight months straight or even the the propeller noise just weeks and months straight and they just getting the team together and they're like come on guys it's tuesday it's pizza tuesday so we're all gonna be working on the propeller <laughs> 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 I couldn't imagine that, a propeller hat. <laughs> oh my god! And well, yeah. and actually, it it um. In speaking of like crunch, though, for for this game specifically, two weeks before launch, they were still adding levels to the game. Two wow, weeks before insane. they, yeah. maybe not launch, but before it, the the final had to go out to for all the discs to be manufactured yeah. and whatnot before it because goes gold, i believe is what they call right Isn't that what they yeah, call? sorry what yeah. oh yeah before it goes gold exactly before it goes gold, yeah. and it was specifically for the challenge level some of the challenge stuff they wanted yeah. to create for all the expert players and they had to design like three or four new levels within two weeks mm-hmm now they said they did luck out because they could use there was previous levels that they had scrapped and so they took those and just kind of reworked them and like uh, tinkered with them a little bit. So they they weren't completely starting from scratch, mm-hmm. but it still was something that was super uh, difficult to do. And in speaking of difficult to do, another just to add another layer of how much attention to detail Nintendo puts into their games. Um, and it's funny, I'm giving all these compliments to this game. I wasn't the biggest fan when I was playing this recently. I did not. Oh. I was getting so, <laughs> I, I don't know if it was because of me playing poorly or if it was because the controls felt a little bit too floaty to me. Mm. I'm, I'm leaning towards me playing poorly. I'm not even saying that to give the game <laughs> the benefit of the doubt. But like there's right. certain times where it's like you can tell when you fuck up and you can right, tell when right, the game right, causes yeah. you to fuck up. And yeah. there was moments of that, which is why I wasn't quite sure how I felt about the game. But mm-hmm. I, th- I think the main reason is, is this game is significantly harder than the D than it's DS counterpart. And we'll get into why that is in a little bit, but in terms of um, attention to detail, we talked about, but we talked before about the, or we brought up, I should say, we can talk about it now. The super guide mode, the uh, the mm, Super yeah. Mario guide, which was created for if you failed a level too many times, you could hit this little green block and oh, it right. would essentially right. Mario or Luigi would pop in and play the level for you. Mm. And what it, and if you, if you wanted to, if you press the the plus button or the the start button, I guess on, on the sideways Wii mode, the player can then take control of Luigi. So you can play up to a certain point, like have the game play it for you. Yeah. What's wild about that, and I'm pretty, I'm not entirely certain this is exactly how they did it. But in order to do that, essentially what they did was all of the game developers and this kind of goes back to what we were talking about with the super mario ltd or the what was it the super mario fuck, mario club mario club mario there club, we yeah. go the yeah. mario club company they when they were doing the super guide it was the employees having to play through different levels 
over and over and over again until they basically played in a way that re- mimicked no one's style. They had to like completely get rid of their own personal styles and just be like, when you jump, it has to be very deliberate. You can't like, don't dart back. Don't like they, they were very specific with how they wanted the, the, the devs yeah, to is. quote unquote record these super Mario guide sections for each level. And they would have to, it was, it was very tedious because like, obviously they have to do this for every single level and right. it, it, it takes a lot of effort. And I think the way they did this was kind of what like task bots do, you know, the tool assisted speed runs do yeah. where they program input. So essentially my, my assumption, I can't say they definitely did this, but from the vibe I, I got from the, what I ask and what I understand of how some of this stuff works, they would record all the inputs of the play testers or the people who mm. were doing the super Mario guy, the super guides. Mm-hmm. And then they would just code those, those inputs in. So that way, when the player would hit the super guide block, the inputs would just start going on their own and they would play uh, okay. it in the same And then when they hit the frame. plus button, they would just regain control at that yeah. moment. Yes. They would okay. stop the inputs from there and they would give control back to the player. And a lot of, a lot of games that you see, especially with like retro, um, a lot of the retro collections, like the Atari 50th that mm-hmm. came out recently, a lot of the stuff that digital clips does is really well, like that they, they do fucking fantastic work with their stuff. They did the TMNT Kawabunga collection that came out last year. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. That that's similar to how they kind of do it, where it's like it's programmed inputs. It's very it kind of reminds me of a tool assisted speed run where it's just you program what buttons to press versus having a, a video playback of it. Yeah. If that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, that's that's kind of crazy. I I remember that a little bit, but I don't think I dabbled in any of it when I was actually playing. Another thing that adds into that is you know when you're going through these levels you can collect the large uh star coins and there's three in each Mm -hmm. level that you can collect and one of the biggest differences between the ds1 and the wii version is the wii version gave them a little more value so i didn't actually know this if you start on the main level the first level and go back into peach's castle you can Mm -hmm. use those coins as almost a currency to give yourself some hints or to show little videos of the developers doing these kind of crazy moves and kind of crazy things similar to what the the helpful luigi uh thing would do so uh, i thought that was really interesting because for one like i said it adds a new value to these star coins but it also is just like now these are more things the developers are doing not only do they have this like help system that they're doing but they're also doing these little hints if anybody gets stuck and they're having these cool intricate moves that they put in there to kind of see if players can replicate which is i thought was interesting yeah i've never i don't think i ever used the super guide block at all i don't think i also have i do have a memory of that happening because i i remember like you know, being with people or, or playing by myself, whatever, whatever it is. I don't know. I just have a memory of mm-hmm. like, you have to die eight times though. But like, mm-hmm. I remember, I do remember that occurring. Like I remember seeing the block or whatever it may be, just the moment occurring and being like, oh mm-hmm. wow, that's like interesting. That's weird. I just remember the scenario happening, but I don't think I ever was like, oh, I'm just going to let this, like, I'm just going to let this happen. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I wanted yeah. to actually play the game. So, I mean, I don't know who it's for. Maybe it's for the younger generation or I don't know, yeah. but I mean, it's, 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 well, it's they, there and, and that's what it is, I guess. Yeah. Well, they almost kind of like mitigated that in games going forward. I would less so in the 2D ones, I think, but like applicable mm-hmm. to some of the 3D Marios or like 3D Land and 3D World. If you die enough times, you just get like the invincibility leaf. So you just don't take oh, damage right. the entire yeah, time you go right. through. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of their, their fix to that instead of having yeah. like to program this character that plays the level for you. They're just like, here, you don't die. I mean, if you fall yeah. off the level, you still die, which you always I mean, die of that. Which, which, speaking of that, did they did they do that? Has that always been a mechanic in Mario? Like, if you think back no. to maybe 3 or World, no. did they ever it, do it, that? The, the, the Super right? Guide block, this type of thing was first added mm-hmm. in this game. In this was the first Mario game Bros. that did something yeah. like this. And I'm, I'm honestly not surprised it was added. I actually, it, in a weird sense, there, there was some drama around it being added just because they're like, oh, they're dumbing Mario down and bullshit right, like that. Right, but right. realistically... A, you don't have to take the power up. It doesn't force it upon you. Second of all, 
uh, it was meant to kind of like one of the biggest criticisms of new Super Mario Bros. DS was that it was too easy. A lot of fans mm-hmm. felt it was too easy. Yeah. And I'll be honest, after playing the what I was able to of the Wii one and mm-hmm. the DS one, the DS one is so easy. Like it's yeah. like I yeah. I was able to get to, into one of the cannons and shoot me to the last world. And I was still like, I mean, the last world was giving me a challenge, but it never felt that yeah. challenging it was just like all right i just got to put some more time into it with yeah, this I gotta, I gotta, I, go ahead sorry go ahead no i was uh, just gonna interject and and just and, and just second that and agree like i i feel like super mario bros the 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 ds1 new super mario bros ds was uh so easy that i kind of don't even really remember much because i feel like yeah. i went through it so fast and it was over so fast so I don't feel like I remember, and that kind of you know points to the fact that well, if it was over that fast, it's either one a short game or was easy for you to go through everything that quickly, mm-hmm. you know. So I kind of second that. It it is a little easy, and when I was playing this one, the Wii one, I was getting pissed off, like legitimately, like <laughs> trying not to throw the controller onto the ground because I don't want to wake my kid up in the room behind me, you know. Like I I'm trying so hard to be quiet, and. I, but I think their way to mitigate this to Nintendo is oh and especially in the Wii era, Nintendo was obsessed with trying to appeal to the casual gamer or yeah, uh, un, like uh, gamers who were disenfranchised almost, or not disenfranchised, right. uh, disaffected maybe. Because when I've I've talked about this in other episodes, but the jump from two D to three D gaming alienated a lot of gamers because mm-hmm. some people just couldn't wrap their minds to work to work that logic in a 3d space now that has been mitigated since because so many kids have grown up on 3d gaming that it's like you kind of have that market but you've kind of recouped that market it's almost the opposite where kids aren't enjoying like 2d i mean we have a lot of stuff like shovel knight and dead cells that are like really fun platformers but a lot of things are 3d now too it's funny we actually talked about that on the ds episode the new super mario bros ds episode like without new super mario bros ds would 2d gaming be as popular as it is right now i mean it would always be popular with a certain segment of the gaming of of the gaming audience but would it be popular now even with younger audiences and we kind of came to the conclusion like probably not but i didn't want to say definitively because i genuinely didn't know well even Um, like you were talking about with the Wii and you know the the 3D change for a lot of things like alienating a lot of people. I feel like the the DS version and I think more importantly the Wii version was almost like Nintendo's reintroduction to Mario with a lot of people because the Wii was huge. The Wii was like mm-hmm. your mom and your grandma and your uncle and your like everyone had a Wii everybody, and it was playing yeah. the Wii. So they wanted to create a new Mario that could appeal to everybody and, and maybe this like helpful system helped. You know, that's exactly why I think they included the new the guide blocks. Yeah, the yeah. guide block was for new players that had uh, to struggle were new to Mario, and this was more difficult than the DS version, which is what a lot of people that played the DS version was wanting too. So they were trying to kind of appeal to the best of both worlds, which kind of felt like the whole market for the Wii. That's what it was. It was like everyone could play yeah. this. There's a game everybody. for anybody on this thing. Yeah, you, you bring up a, a good point. You're right, because you got to think of the new generations. You know, every time we go through a, yeah. a console cycle, there's new generations of kids that are growing up on things and learning different things. And it's true. You said the 3D games and how games are now. And this was like a mm-hmm. re a revisit to what Mario used to be. It's a 2D platformer. It's a side scroller. They may not be used to this. We've got to find a way to cater to all the fans that grew up on Mario, the people somewhere in between that have, have experienced Experience both and the people that are super excited for this comeback of the 2d side scrolling t- type of game and then the people that have no idea have never played it before or only maybe dabbled in the old ones and they're just not interested in the old ones because they're just playing they're just playing these you know they're playing exactly the stuff. so you're right yeah. it is kind of once again nintendo which i think they kind of it's like their mantra of everything being for everybody so every yeah, few console cycles it's era. kind of a, mm-hmm. a reset or a reintroduction to something in a sense and i, I feel like you nailed that yeah. I mean, it, it, it really, and the Wii era was a hundred percent that like everything, yeah. like the Wii was all trying to, it was, it was accessibility. Their whole intention was to yep. get a, a Wii into, into expand the gaming audience, which they definitely did. Yeah, um, they did definitely. And I, I honestly wonder if like by expanding the gaming audience, I wonder because of that, is that when we start, is that, I don't, I'm not going to say why, but did it aid mm. in the expansion of new genres kind of being 
discovered in the 2010s. Like 2010s is where you started like, um, you know, the Telltale game started coming mm. up, kind of like not coming out, but like kind of really gaining traction. Then you also have like walking sim style games. And then you also have, right. there's so many new genres of games that came out and like Telltale games are kind of an evolution of the point and click adventure, but like right. walking sims are their own kind of thing. Like it's such a fine line yeah. to walk no pun intended to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh make a walking sim feel like a game and not just be of like a narrative that you're kind of that's kind of thrust on but yeah. um in any case with with this game with new super mario bros Wii, uh i i think by adding that guide block it's exactly what you said jared where it's it was a, trying to appeal to all different gamers of all different challenge or all different skill yeah. levels excuse me and I think this block serves two purposes. One, the appeal that we already mentioned, trying to make sure that new gamers can see how a level is supposed to be beaten. But two, I actually think, I know, like I said, there was a little bit of drama online because people thought it was dumbing down Mario. I actually think it did the opposite because I, when I see that, I, I'm almost insulted at the game. I'm like, you motherfucker, you don't think that I can beat this level? You're giving me <laughs> well, this, this if guide block? you died eight times and you're already angry and you're like, I yeah, don't yeah, need exactly. this goddamn help. I can do this myself. Yeah, I don't I need this thing after I clearly <laughs> failed eight times in a row yeah. and, they're, and they're just trying to don't fucking you, help me. <laughs> yeah. Don't you tell me what my skill is. And it, there was always, I remember playing, uh, super mario 3d land on the on the 3ds and i would die a whole there i love those games but i would die a bunch on them and you would get that invincibility block and i remember literally remember being like fuck you i'm not taking this and just (laughs) like yelling at my ds this inanimate object about giving me this block oh my gosh it was ridiculous and wonderful all at the same time um that's crazy uh let me see what other what else do I have with my notes in this level or in this for this game. Um, I don't know much about this, but apparently there was like a Japan Championships coin battle for this game. Like they had like in Japan they had oh. like a coin battle tournament for this game. I've like never they heard like of like that. held a tournament and people came and competed in the, the the coin battle. I'm gonna like uh I'm gonna double check i'm like googling new like japan championships coin battle mario and okay hold on we uh something from silicon era new super mario bros Wii coin battle champ gets a gold trophy uh nintendo is holding a new so this is an article from a website called silicon era um written by just a silicon era staff back in 2010 uh, Nintendo is holding a new Super Mario Bros. Wii coin battle competition in Japan. Uh, win and you get this Mario trophy. Play and you get you still get some unannounced item as a consolation prize. Uh, participants have to fight for coins on these courses. Uh, coin 1, Coin 3, Coin 5, World 4-5, and World 5-4. So there That's, is a whole yeah. championship for this. That's crazy. I wonder how much of because around this time, the 2009, 2010s, we start getting a big influx of like esports. Like esports are starting to become more and more popular. Right. And I wonder if Nintendo's like, this is them trying to dabble their toe into like, oh, let's see oh, if we can they, do some platform Mario esport. They've dabbled in this type of thing well, long before this. You can find, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. I mean, there is the Nintendo World Championships back in yeah. the early 90s, yeah, that, which yeah. are now super rare cartridges if you can find them mm-hmm. uh i don't know if there Did were they, any in the 80s. wasn't it the late I, 80s i thought it was the early 90s but i could be mistaken i because no, wasn't oh. there uh like a movie based about it and they had like the power glove <laughs> and no, that was so, in the 80s you're you're, you're or am i you're, confusing you're two, different things? two things so but okay you're okay. thinking of the movie the wizard uh the movie right. the wizard was uh actually the first one was in 1990 the nintendo world champions so the movie you're talking about though the wizard came out in 89 so you are so you're not off with thinking 80s now in that movie uh, that movie was actually how nintendo kind of did i I don't want to say announced but it was one of their biggest that movie was essentially just a hour and a half long commercial for nintendo (laughs) products because the way the movie ends (laughs) 
the way the movie ends is on a fi- is in a fictional game tournament. I forget what it's called. I'll try to look up the movie real quick. I don't think uh, I've ever watched the movie from beginning to end. I've always all I've only only always seen just like portions here and there. I don't think I've ever watched the full thing. There so is that's, a, that's why I probably it, don't know everything either. I just seen it's worth portion. watching. It's wild. There's a young Toby Maguire who doesn't have any speaking lines in it, but he looks oh, like I a fucking eight year old. It'd be even a little more hilarious if it just it just looked like Toby Maguire, like how he is today. <laughs> it's just, just it's still the same. Toby Maguire. Yeah, exactly. He's just there in the background. He's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Um, oh, they man. go to this, but in in the movie, uh, The Wizard, they go to, I think it's called Video Armageddon is the name of the tournament. It's a completely like made up tournament right, right. for the movie. And the final, the final like game that they're playing in this tournament mm-hmm. is at the time an unreleased Super Mario Bros. 3. So this was like the first oh. taste that any kid in the, in North America got of Super Mario Bros. 3, even though it had already been out in Japan yeah, well before that. This whole movie is just a Nintendo marketing scheme. Like, <laughs> oh, if you, I mean, it's, it's been a long-running joke that if you take out the Power Glove segment, you don't even need to edit it. You just cut that out, and it looks like a commercial <laughs> from the one 80s. seamless cut. Yeah. That's funny. Because <laughs> it's this kid, it's the bully named Lucas who looks like a stereotypical, mm-hmm. like, cool 80s kid, but he's also an asshole. Yeah. And he's playing the Power <laughs> yeah, Glove, always. and it's cutting back, and you see him doing, like, you know, like, kind of mean mugging the camera a little bit, like, trying to, like yeah. squint his eyes to like see like oh I'm I'm playing so intense and then it ends yeah. with him literally holding the power glove like to his chest going I love the power glove it's so bad <laughs> I love the power glove thank you Nintendo you will always be <laughs> my pretty favorite. much I know he name name drops Nintendo specifically and everything <laughs> smiles and it does the little ding oh. in his in his teeth and oh, everything man. Dude. And it's even fu- funnier too because they he Lucas even references because this was the time when there wasn't a huge library for it, and they're yeah. like, uh, the uh, sorry, it wasn't a huge library in North America. He's like, I've got all fifteen games or whatever it was. It, I forget how many he said, but <laughs> it was at yeah. the time it was the full Nintendo library, and it fit in like a, <laughs> a pack of like thirty or some shit like that. That's hilarious. Yeah, oh, man, I'm, that's... I'm, I googled it right now to see if it's available to watch anywhere. But it's, I mean, it it is, but you got to pay for it. I, I meant if it was on, like on any streaming services for free. Oh, you know, streaming. I mean, you could. Anything. There's but probably yeah, totally legal it. downloads of it that you could find. Oh, probably. You can go on yeah, the I internet remember, somewhere I, and find it. Oh, I'm pretty sure you can. I I forgot. Yeah, Fred Savage is in this. Ben Savage's older and brother, Christian Slater, a Christian young Christian Slater. Slater. I did not know he was in that. I'm looking what at is that this right movie? now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they just threw people together yeah that's crazy. it is you know what i've i've always talked about do, so every now and then i will do a uh, movie episodes of the podcast i'll just have to have to have you guys on because it'll be even funnier for two people who oh, have I'm never down. seen it yeah to like yeah, watch it and then dude. we th- these episodes <laughs> go long just as a forewarning these like yeah, yeah. My, for example my still bonding episodes go for almost three hours because we break down the movie oh, beat shit. by beat oh no now, i'm not I'll saying this will go for three I'll hours get my blanket. yeah we'll dude be good. yeah i'll be cozy yeah man definitely dude I, i'm looking to two that i read this wrong at first i like directed by tom holland like Damn, dude wasn't even <laughs> fetus yet. You know, it's like, like before he was that's alive. Crazy, you know, but it's Todd Holland. Todd Holland. Uh, <laughs> Not... <laughs> oh, man. who actually? Um, I I literally clicked on his his Wikipedia page, and he's from Pennsylvania, like me. So how how about that? Nice, dude. Like, hey, he directed a Max Headroom show, like episode, like you know, the Max oh, Headroom's Malcolm, like that, and twenty six uh, episodes of Malcolm in the Middle as well. <laughs> that's such a specific number of Malcolm in the Middle episodes. I know he did twenty six. <laughs> that's and crazy. an episode of Gracie yeah. and Frankie. Gracie and Frankie, are probably from Netflix. But anyway, sorry, uh, Jared, you were going to say something. I keep cutting you off because we keep diving into this. Dude's, no, I'm, uh, I'm now curious about this movie and and want this. Uh, this yeah, I want to watch the whole thing now. <laughs> Yeah. No, I was going to ask you if you guys ever played the uh, new Super Mario Bros. 2, the sequel to the the DS version. Yes, Yes, it's great. I want to say it's not the Golden Coins. That's that's the other one. But that's the Game Boy title. Did it have a tag? I mean, it just I think this one was on 3DS, I believe. But your mind's yeah. not going crazy, Chazzy, because yeah. New Super all... Mario Bros. 2 was known for how many coins right. you could collect. It was right. all, yeah. Literally, all, the all... cover is like all coins. Like that yeah, was like their shit. Yeah. Everything's like gold and 
you get the gold yeah. Mario, and then you had the uh, feature where you could see everybody's like stats and where they were at with their their coins and everything. I believe as yeah. well, and you could see yours, and it was like a big deal. I remember all that. Yeah, yeah, well, I played before... that. I... No, oh, sorry, go for man. No, no, you're good. You're good. Good. I was gonna say before before we started recording, we kind of talked about like stepping stone games, and you know we talked about like struggles and issues with some of the controls and the floatiness of the wii version yeah. but there is this one on the 3ds and then there was the wii u one that came afterward that felt like they kind of improved and just build upon these yeah. mechanics yeah. So i just didn't know if you guys had any experience playing these other two yeah, yeah well no, i don't want to go into too much because i'm going to eventually have to do another mario month and those games will be covered yeah so there you there, go yeah mario month is this ever the, ever the only thing, thing. The only thing I want to say is about about the one that was on the DS, the the the, mm. the sequel on the DS. I didn't like it as much. That's oh, one of the first Mario games that I can really say I wasn't the biggest fan of. Mm. I just felt like it was a little. Um, I feel like they just kind of made it just to make it, and like I I didn't necessarily really like the whole coin collecting thing because yeah. it didn't really amount to anything there was no like reward at the end of it you're yeah. just doing it, almost it took just the, to like the it. value away from coins yeah. also yeah it was very sh- i remember it being really short like i it was short i remember so quickly yes i remember beating it and going that's it <laughs> like yeah i beat this so fast so anyway it's not what this episode's about and you're gonna do another one but i just wanted uh, to, at some point i, I don't know when <laughs> it'll be another mario <laughs> month for another yeah, yeah. the the whole tangent we got off on those started because we were talking about the coin battle <laughs> championship <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in uh and that they had in this so yes they did have uh this nintendo coin championship or whatever the fuck it was something yeah. that was held in japan um and apparently it was in on around in february in 2010 is when this ran which is kind of cool um and i'm looking at like a picture of the mario statue it actually looks pretty cool right now but it, it's just it was really cool to see all the things they added into this game and so while i i guess to kind of go into a little more specific on some of my criticisms of the game mm-hmm. I, I referenced most of them already the biggest thing is just I felt like this game, the difficulty ramped up incredibly fast. It didn't feel like a gradual swing. Like Super mm-hmm. Mario Bros. 3, uh, it's not until like the fourth or fifth world that I really start feeling like the 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 grind. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like yeah. it starts where it really starts to get a little bit more tedious. Mm-hmm. Actually, even in the third one. In this one, it felt I already was getting frustrated with levels in the second world. I was still beating them with like relative ease, like in one or two tries, but I was starting to get frustrated. And I don't know if if it's just like, was I playing really that poorly or is the game? Mm. I mean, I guess it, I think I did this game a bit of a disservice because I played this so shortly after replaying uh, or playing for Mario month, new super Mario bros DS and then super Mario galaxy one and two, which both oh, of them, Galaxy all three great. of those are, yeah, they're fantastic yeah. games. And But both of those games are significantly easier than this. So yeah. I didn't have a lot of, I was under a time crunch to play as much of this as I possibly could versus like in Super Mario Bros. DS, I would get all the, the star coins. I would try to get all mm-hmm. three coins in each level. I would try to, you know, explore the levels as much as I can. In this, because I was having such a hard time, I was always saying, fuck it, I don't care about this coin. I'm going to the next one. <laughs> and that's how it yeah. always end up. Um, I also don't like the their ice levels in this as much as i love the penguin suit i always found mm-hmm. myself having a much harder time navigating their ice levels in this than others and i don't i don't know exactly why um i just i yeah. do think though in general this game is better designed like i i think the difficulty yeah. as much as i i don't consider my criticism of it a legit criticism i think it's more of a personal preference i think mm. it's just i wasn't looking to be challenged as much as it was mainly because i just didn't have time and that it sucks because yeah. the level design in this is really strong i'm i'm so very good. impressed by the level design but it mm-hmm. it's it's difficult i don't know what what are you guys thoughts any criticisms of the game or any other points that you want to kind of bring up about it uh I don't know. Like, I really don't, I don't know if I have any too many criticisms with it. It, it was like a, I, I, I think mm. some of with any game, with anything, I mean, anything you really do in life also points back to the moment in time, like where maybe you yeah. were at in your life, your headspace, yes. or who you were doing it with, or even if it was alone, it, it, you know, just what you were going through in your life. And so at that time in my life, 
was a good time in my life. It was a good mm -hmm. memory. Um, like I kept saying, I was in a relationship. The relationship ended up sucking, but <laughs> before <laughs> but it started, great. <laughs> the Mario was awesome. But uh, no, but before <laughs> it ended up, you know, where it went south and it went bad, we were in a good place and we were having a good time. And then, like I said, mm -hmm. so I have those memories of playing with her, playing with my brother, and it was like the three of us most of the time. Sometimes my brother would bring one of his friends and then that would, you know, seal the deal yeah. of having four people playing. But it was mainly the three of us. So, like I said, I think it's also kind of based off your memories of who you were with and what was going on in your life at that time. And for me, it was like a good time in my life. So I had, you know, my brother and my girl there and we were having just a, an amazing time playing yeah. this new Super Mario Bros game that was a trip back to the 2D, which is what I grew up on. And one of the things mm -hmm. that I'm a, the biggest fans of, you know, 3 and, and World are my favorite uh, 2D Mario games. And so for me, it was a lot of that. So I don't quite know if I yeah. have any that I could think of right now. I'm sure if I revisited it, recently and played it mm -hmm. i could find something but off the top of my head i currently can't now real quick yeah. before I get, we go over to you jared chazzy i think you actually clarified something for myself as to why this i don't like this game as mm -hmm. much i don't have a nostalgic connection to it in all the other games uh, i've covered for mario yeah, month yeah. this year um super mario bros ds i remember playing uh either on my honeymoon or like uh like oh, right. travel like th there was something like you know because we went to mexico for our honeymoon and i remember playing it around that time uh or like so something close to that time i, I remember yeah. i i it was part of like a, a a year where i'm like i need to play more of my ds games because there's so many of mm -hmm. So many games in my DS collection I haven't touched. So I have yeah. this nostalgia for that game because it was around a time where I was focusing on trying to play more DS games. Galaxy, yeah. I talk about it. In, I talked about it in the Galaxy episode. It was when I first moved in, moved in with my wife, then fiance. Uh, like so, I have all these memories of this big change in my life happening when I played mm -hmm. Galaxy One. Galaxy Two, I have less nostalgia for but even so i still really enjoyed that game and it's still really like i i prefer i think galaxy is just it's hard to beat that formula for me on a personal level like i prefer right. galaxy to most of the 2d games not all i think mario world's my personal favorite of all mario games but mm -hmm. like in uh, but other 2d games like galaxy still ranks up like both galaxy games rank above a lot of 2d games so when you right. look at the four that we've covered this uh, this month and obviously uh listeners you haven't heard the super mario galaxy 2 episode but i spoiler alert i like the game um <laughs> this one just it doesn't quite click with me as much because i yeah. i don't have this strong nostalgic connection to it and i my my only connection to this game is the brief like couple hangouts on pizza tuesday of watching my friends get yeah. pissed at each other yeah. and then the other that was the last time i really touched this game which was over a yeah. decade ago yeah, and yeah. then the other time that i played it was the last week and a half where I'm crunching, trying to get as much of this game done. Exactly. So it's like, exactly. it's very little memories from over 10 years ago. And the, one of the worst possible ways to experience a game. <laughs> right. Mm. Right. See, that makes for good conversation though. And I mean, there's going to be people yeah. that connect with whatever I say, with whatever Jared says, with, with whatever you say. And it's, it goes back and forth and it, for the listeners as well. And it, everybody's experiences are different and everybody's preferences right. are different and everybody's opinions are different. So, but it makes for good conversation on a podcast. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, that's why I have you guys on to balance out <laughs> this, uh, this inexperience. And that, that's always one of my personal goals with the, not goals, but one of my, one of the things I try to do with the show is when I'm talking about a game, I don't hmm. care. I, I know some listeners will have an issue with this, but I don't care if I haven't finished a game or not. If I can yeah. talk about the design of what I played intelligently and I get enough of a vibe of the game, I can do that. However, yeah. I need to have my guest have good experience with the game because I need someone yeah. to balance out the lack of yeah. knowledge I have for late game yeah. to kind of talk about it, it with it with better knowledge for mm -hmm. than I do. So yeah. sorry, Jared, yeah. over to you. Yeah, I mean, talked about good points here and I feel like we always look at like nostalgia as a negative thing, right? But that goes into how we feel about a game so mm -hmm. much. Like when yeah. we're playing and how we're feeling and what our environment is and what our life is at the moment, that goes into so much of even a game that's, you know, fundamentally built amazing and a 10 out of 10. If you're having a shitty part in your life, you're probably not going to enjoy that so much. But yeah. I had similar situations as Chazzy as I 
have a lot of nostalgia to this. Like my wife and I played a lot of Super Mario when we first started dating. And this is like, like 2D platformers are like our thing now. Like that's what we do when we play games together. We usually nice. go and check out 2D platformers. And it's because awesome. of Mario games like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, some of the things that we didn't talk about to mechanics are one, they added the the triple jump to this game. So you can jump three times and you can get momentum mm. every time you, you jump there. And then the like extra little bit of momentum you get. So if you're in the air and you shade the controller, your, your character like twists, you get like almost a tiny little bit of momentum yeah. as you're jumping yeah, into like the air. It propels you forward right? a bit too. Yeah. yeah, it propels you forward a little bit. And I'm curious of how much that like, because I feel like they built off of that in some of the games going forward and they feel good there. But, you know, this being the first game that they were doing that, it being the initial game, it being four player, like I feel like I died a lot because there's these new mechanics like the triple jump and the spin where I just yeah. fall off ledges because I don't time my jumps right. I don't do any of that. So I feel like for me, that added to a lot of the difficulty too. But I mean, I have so much fond memories with Mario and especially okay. this one too. It's like staying up late and yelling at friends and, and being angry and competing with one another like and like i said that adds so much into your like own enjoyment of a game yeah and nostalgia is like i always joke around with friends like you know nostalgia is one hell of a drug uh <laughs> yeah and it, 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 is, it is but though, it is. and nostalgia yeah. but the thing is the the thing that sucks but is beautiful and it sucks about nostalgia is that there's i almost think there's two different kinds of nostalgia there's mm -hmm. the positive kind and then there's the poisonous kind and by poisonous i don't mean like negative nostalgia like you know you assume, like uh not not quite ptsd but like you have negative memories i'm not talking right. about that i'm talking about nostalgia of good memories you know good nostalgia is usually you know positive memories but like positive nostalgia but when it's poisonous it's when it taints your current world view it's where oh, yeah. you think automatically everything that it was as a kid that that things that were for you as a kid are better than they are now and or you start like attacking people because of it too and you're just yes. like ocarina of time is the best game and you're bad if you think that it's not and it's like whoa okay exactly <laughs> exactly I mean, it's great and, i love it too but i don't, don't attack. Yeah, but it's yeah. poisonous nostalgia and uh yeah. what is it uh eager to use the ocarina of time example eager raptor did that whole video on sequelitis about yeah, sequelitis. ocarina of time giving a real good breakdown as to why there are a lot of major design flaws with that game but he he, you could tell in the video he tries to like head the arguments off at the past where he's like what am i doing i'm critic i'm critically analyzing ocarina time on the internet i'm gonna get crucified <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. that fear yeah. right there because of the backlash that backlash yeah. is poisonous nostalgia where your mm -hmm. views of what the world was back at the time automatically is means it's better than what it is currently and don't get me wrong there are some things in the past that are better than they are right now, but there's a lot of things right now that are better than they were in the past. So like, it's just mm, one of those yeah. things. You just have to accept that time moves on. Now, what yeah. I consider positive nostalgia and the reason why I like, I, I it's actually kind of funny that we kind of are ending this episode on this note here. I, you know how on Facebook you have the memories and you can see all yeah. the different shit that you post like years ago. I had a post a couple of years ago trying of, me kind of like talking through, I don't post much on Facebook anymore, but it was me kind of trying to work through my emotions as to why I get so nostalgic over video games and why nostalgia mm, particularly yeah. is yep. so um, like enticing to me and a lot of people in our generation and like our age group and everything. Yeah. Um, and I kind of, I don't know if this is actually the case, but at least this is for me. I get nostalgic because when you're a kid, I almost feel like the you have more choices at your fingertips. Yeah. There is so many yep. more possibilities because you don't you I, I said I said it in my post where it's like this is gonna get super philosophical on a fucking new Super Mario Bros. Oh, Wii good. episode. It's, I'm here. But it's like, great. I love it. Um yeah. you as you get older you, walls start building up around you and whether those walls are built up by other people or even worse they're built up by yourself and you start to yeah. limit your own possibilities but when you're a kid those walls are gone you don't have those walls so you have all yeah. these different possibilities and it doesn't have to be with video games specifically but nostalgia is what ties you back to that point in time where 
you had yeah. less worries, less cares, but you also had more possibilities. You didn't yeah. limit yourself as much because you didn't because the world hadn't done something to you or you didn't yeah. do something to yourself. And I think nostalgia is such a wonderful thing when used properly. And I'd right. like to think this podcast is kind of my take on trying to promote this type of positive, positive. nostalgia, like being able yeah, to yeah. look back on something fondly, remember the good times you had as a kid, but also remember some things there, there's some, it, whether it's uh problematic issues, it's like I joke about in my still bonding stuff. Like I love the James Bond movies. There's some fucked up shit in those movies. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so you can, but it, I think it's just trying to, make people okay with the fact that you can still love something and acknowledge all its flaws. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, no, definitely. I mean, even going off of what you were saying with nostalgia to something in my own personal life that I, I've tried to do is, you know, it, for one, look at nostalgia as, as positive and have that positive take on nostalgia. But nostalgia isn't just something that you had when you were a kid. It's something that you can continue yes. to build yes. up. Yeah. As an yeah. adult. Like create fond memories with things that you love, like games. So even looking five years back at games that I played for the first time, having that like that that feeling and that love towards that thing at, at the time. Yeah, and yeah. again, be able to look at it critically if you're in a medium like us where we're look we're reflecting on games and we're talking yeah. about all aspects of them. Have that ability, but don't don't stop that nostalgia and continue yeah. going on and continue to create those those fond memories with games yeah you know, you know it's funny that it's funny that you guys like bring that up because i had a moment the other day where i was kind of like sad and mm. i don't remember exactly what started it but it had something to do with video games and stuff and i don't remember what i was doing i don't remember everything exactly but i just remember the feeling in the moment and like i was thinking back to like the like the experiences that I've I've had, I think it was with World of Warcraft. Actually, I think I was having a conversation mm. with somebody about World of Warcraft. I've been a Warcraft player uh, since two thousand six, and mm -hmm. the That's last awesome. yeah, it's been, it's been forever. I, it, it started when I I saw the South Park episode. Actually, make love, <laughs> not Warcraft. I, oh, that's awesome! Super <laughs> super. Yeah, super quick backstory. Sitting at my grandmother's house, I lived there at the time, and uh, saw I was a huge South Park fan. Watched the episode. And had some friends that actually had tried to get me into Warcraft because it came out like I think a year or two before I started playing. Tried to get me into it. I was always like, no, I'm not into stuff like that. I'm totally into stuff like that. I just didn't give it a chance. Then saw the <laughs> South Park episode and I was like, oh my God, like this is what they've been trying to get me into. Downloaded it that night. But of course, back then it was different internet. So it took like three days to download. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah. Dial like, up, working at its best. Yeah, dude. You know what I yep. mean? And then, and then installed it and played it and was hooked ever since. But I think the conversation started, if I remember correctly, because um, I haven't really been playing WoW the last three years, I guess you could say. It has been getting less and less for the first time in mm. my life. And mm. it almost like I had a moment the other day when we were talking about it and I was like realizing how it's getting less and less even more since I was talking about it. And I had a moment where I was just like sad and I was just like, it's a combination of things. It's... um a couple expansions that I wasn't really just into. They were kind of failing mm -hmm. and then they brought it, they mm -hmm. brought it back with Dragonflight. Don't know if you guys know anything yeah. about Warcraft and stuff, but I haven't had the time to delve into an MMO RPG like that anymore. Mm -hmm. And then, yep. and then because I haven't had the time and I've been away for so long, there's times where I try to go back and I play and I find myself not as intrigued as I remember being. And it's mm -hmm. just life just changes. Things change. I don't know a hundred percent what it all entails and boils down to but it like made me sad and i was just like i want so bad to go back to like 2006 yeah. 7 8 that sense of just, wonder you had yes yeah. and just be like in engulfed in world of warcraft and close out my world and not care and then it made me think bringing it back to more what you guys were talking about going even further into childhood even even mm. younger days of where like you just didn't have the responsibilities you have yeah. you didn't have the world didn't treat you a certain way now that you're an adult you see things differently I mean, there's a combination yeah. of things that we could talk about all day and i'm just like had like these moments where i was just thinking like i'll never experience this gets sad, but like I'll never experience that moment again. I'll never experience playing Super Mario Bros. 3 or Super Mario World again ever like that that moment. Right. And it's yeah. over. Like I'll always yeah. have the nostalgia and the memory, but 
it's over. But then you can, like you said, Jared, create moments as That's you continue as going. You, new memories you can have those. those yeah. yeah. But there was like a moment there where I was just like, man, like I'm really growing up. Like I'll never get to experience <laughs> this again. Like it's yeah. over. All it, I have is the memory. Yeah. You know? It's funny that you yeah. say that because I, like, I'm a huge Pokemon fan. I watch mm-hmm. the anime still. I play a lot of the games and from yeah. playing it since it's original, since it's origin, I have yeah. a sense of nostalgia for it. I have a sense of playing red and blue for the first time on my game yeah. right? and figuring out Link Cable for the first time. Me and my friends being <laughs> oh blown my God, away Link that that was cable. like a thing. <laughs> but yes. it's like we, we, we're on, we're, I'm not going to be able to experience Pokemon that same way again. Because yes, my life yes. is different. I'm older. I yeah. have different responsibilities. The world is different. So I have right. to find new ways of creating new nostalgia and new experiences with these things. Like, I still love watching the anime. I still love playing the games. And it's surreal because if you're, again, I don't know when this is coming out, but, like, Ash is now leaving the anime. Like, right. they're officially retiring right. Ash as a thing. And that's, like, such a that's such a surreal yes. feeling. But it's, like... This is a this is the next step. This is the next step in my life, and I gotta yeah. not ignore those old parts because they're important too. But it's also important yeah. to create new uh, experiences for yourself too. Right, right. Now we are gonna have to wrap this up, unfortunately, because this conversation, <laughs> like, I, I, like I'm the 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 we didn't get off of new super mario bros we to be clear this is actually where i wanted the conversation to kind of go once we kind mm, of right. ended up talking about nostalgia yeah. um so we took a, what we took i want to turn real quick <laughs> yeah. well what i want to end what i want to end this portion of the conversation on before we kind of give any final thoughts and some and mm-hmm. we do our closing plugs i'm both of you guys i'm assuming i jared i know you're not chazzy i'm sure are you a father or a parent or anything no 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 i'm not no. okay no. so there's a good chance you guys haven't seen this then i'm going to close this out to kind of lift our spirits a little bit when we're talking about how like kind of being sad about how things aren't the way they used to be I, that like we're never going to mm-hmm. get back those first emotions um as a parent, I watch a lot of kids' shows, and there is a fantastic kid show that some listeners of this show are probably already it's knowing where I'm going to go with. It's Bluey. You fucking knew yep. it exactly right away. <laughs> I knew it's Bluey. There is an episode of Bluey at, called Camping, which fans of the show already know about this episode because it's an iconic one. But the there's an episode of the show where basically I, I'm not going to spoil the big emotional gut punch at the end of the episode. But uh, there's an episode where Bluey and her family are camping and she meets this friend named Jean-Luc and it's adorable. Jean-Luc only speaks French. Bluey only speaks English. So they but they play together. They you you see them get like it kind of has a little bit of a montage of them playing together and not needing language to even play with each other. But <laughs> Jean-Luc tells Bluey in French, even though she doesn't understand, like, I, uh, my family's leaving tomorrow, so I won't get to see you. And they're, they're, when they're hugging, you can see Jean-Luc sad about it. And Bluey's just like, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. It has no idea. Uh, so when Jean-Luc is gone, his family is packed up. Uh, she's running around being like, you know, where is he? And then her mom goes, well, I think they, they packed up. And so Bluey's really sad about it. And then there's a moment in the, they go, they go to bed for the night and there's a moment in the middle of the night when they have to take Bluey's younger sister for quote unquote, a bush week going to the bathroom. Um, and, (laughs) and Bluey's talking to her. Bluey has to go along and Bluey goes, why did Jean-Luc have to leave? And it's just like, well, you know, his parents, you know, it was his time to, you know, they, they were leaving. Uh, his yeah. parents, had, it was his time for his family to leave. He's like, and Blue goes, well, that's sad. And her mom's like, yeah, but the times that you were that they were here was happy, wasn't it? And she goes, yeah. Well, maybe that's just maybe that's just what you have to remember. I'm I'm paraphrasing a little yeah. bit, but so, and they they basically talk about how some people just come into your life for a little mm-hmm. bit, and that's all you get with them. And yeah. while that is sad, maybe just think of the moments that you had with them as a happy thing. And some parent, like there was someone, I saw some like tweet thread, Twitter thread, or it was on a news article. It was like, thank you, Bluey for giving my, me a way to explain death to my kids. And I mean, this is a little bit of a dramatic turn to go the other way, but kind of the death of our childhood and nostalgia. This is the way I kind of view it now where it's like, yeah, it sucks. I won't have that same exact emotion, but to like what you said, Jared, where, we create new ones and it's also just be happy with the memories you were like, be happy that you can still 
like remember those yeah. have those memories yeah. of the stuff he did as a kid and i'm paraphrasing that episode i if any bluey fans are probably going to be pissed that i completely fucking butchered the quote <laughs> the, there the bluey um, uh, fan base is, is going to no. come after you now <laughs> i know right um so I, I i'm pretty sure i i ruined that quote but the sentiment i know i i'm yeah. fairly certain i nailed the message is there uh, the message is there yeah. exactly so yeah. let, let's do a let's do a hard pivot <laughs> to wrap <laughs> to uh wrapping up this episode and just any final thoughts you guys have on new super mario bros we and uh if not we can go into our plugs go ahead, no Jerry. man i think go that's ahead. it i think we covered a lot yeah, I, I kind of agree, man. I think it's it's just a, it's a it's a fun game, especially if uh, you have the ability to, you know, play it with other people. It, it was a, a a really cool side scrolling two D platformer experience with multiplayer and the first of its kind yeah. at the time. So I think everybody yeah. should experience it. I think I mean, the it's multiplayer hard. itself should be is yeah, like yeah. It speaks for its speaks for itself. Sorry, go ahead, Jared. Yeah. Yeah. I was just say it's hard to like. This is a great, 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 great game, but it's hard to recommend this one just because there's so much better ones that you can play that are, are on is, platforms yes. that are more accessible like yes. the switch one yes. the mario bros U, whatever it's on the switch now so like that's probably the best version of True. this that you can play so yeah. go play something 100%. similar yeah. to this it's a great time yeah but i give it its kudos for introducing new power-ups like oh, the, yeah. the ice you know the propeller the penguin and things like that things that mm-hmm. move forward so it definitely is a uh I don't know if throwing around the word pioneer is too big of a word, but you get you get my you know my sense into yeah. it. It is a pioneer in in moving forward the new Super Mario Bros. franchise as a whole. I guess you could say a hundred percent. I think that is uh, actually to the, well a, an applicable way to end this episode talking about the game. It's a it's a good way to kind of yeah. close out this discussion on the game. So guys, thank you so much for joining me for this episode. This was a lot of fun, and Thanks not just me. be. I I, I love like legitimately no passive aggressiveness. Hopefully, in, it doesn't come off that way. I loved our conversation at the end of it. I love oh absolutely when, same here. I love shit like that. So yes, and, yes. and yes. it's it's honestly a testament. Maybe not to this game specifically, but that's what I love about gaming podcasts is that it can yeah. lead into discussions like that where the most mm-hmm. innocuous of topics can lead you down yeah. a road that you're not really expecting to go. Um, yeah. So I really enjoyed having you both on, but to wrap up this episode, we're going to start off with you, Chazzy. Where can okay. the good people find you online? What do you got to promote and what do you got going on? Yes. I'm going to plug a few things here. So bear with me. If you're looking for <laughs> me uh, on Instagram personally, you can find my personal account at IG hates Chazzy. And if you're looking for my, my main podcast, you can find me at side project podcast. And that's across pretty much everything. And that's project with a K it is a gaming film and cosplay podcast with a kind of comedic twist and a cosplayer of the week every week. And like I said, side project project with a K and you can find it on YouTube. It is a very much so a visual uh, podcast as well. Uh, and it's also available to watch on Spotify alongside YouTube. And then uh, by the time this comes out, so as of this recording, uh, I am now a part of the Anime Fire official network where I have my oh, own yes. show. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Where I have my own show, Anime Talks, where I interview all celebrities in the anime world, um, currently specifically voice actors and everything. And uh, by the time, once again, by the time this episode comes out, I believe we'll have maybe, uh, you know what, I'll, pl- I'll plug a-, a few things that you can actually look forward to. The first episode will definitely be out, and it is with Brian Donovan of mm. Davis, a Digimon fame, Rock Lee, Naruto fame. Uh, that'll okay. be out, and then you can expect, I'll give you a, I'll give you a couple. You can expect... Brian Drummond, uh, the original voice of Vegeta, as well as uh, Ryu from Death Note. Uh, you can expect Shannon <laughs> yeah. Chan, Shannon Chan Kent. I'll be having conversations with her, who's also Misa, Misa Amane from Death Note, and uh, and um, Amy Rose from Sonic Prime, and then mm-hmm. uh, Wally Wally w- Wally Wingert, who. Um, has a lot of a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot of credits in the video game world and everything. He's the Riddler in the Arkham games and all kinds of oh, stuff. Okay. And we'll be talking about his uh, a couple of his anime roles as well. And you can expect those things. They'll be on the Anime Fire official YouTube account. And um and uh, and I thank you guys for for being here, chatting with me, and having me on, Josh. I mean, it's been absolutely awesome, dude. Still loading is a great a great podcast. I love it, dude. You go in depth about a lot of thank awesome you. topics, and I really dig this whole. Um, you know, catering to the Mario month thing and all that stuff. Mm. It's it's phenomenal, dude. It's absolutely awesome. So I'm just I'm just happy to be here and I, I can't wait to do the wizard thing if we do it, man. Oh, we're, we're, <laughs> we're fucking doing it. It's happening. Yeah, dude. Just make sure it's on a motherfucking Tuesday and we all have pizza, okay? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. That kind of has to happen. 
I'm kind of down we'll make for it that. Work. Actually. We'll work on schedules. <laughs> I'm kind of down for that. Actually, I don't mind. I, fuck it. I'll eat at nine o'clock at night. I'll. I'll, I'll, I'll I don't care about the intermittent fasting really for symbolic. one night. Like you don't have to eat it. You just got to show it. You know that's fine. Exactly. I just have like a Papa John's pizza, not a sponsor, uh, <laughs> just like bring it up, but not actually touch it. That's be wild. Yeah. Um, that all right, Jared, uh, Jared, shout out your stuff. What do you got going on? Where can people find you and what would you like to promote? Yeah, so Jared for Play Along Podcast, you can find our socials, Instagram, Twitter, Play Along Pod. Honestly, if you just Google Play Along Pod now, you get our uh, you get our Spotify, you get our Apple Podcasts, all of that shows up there. We're essentially like a book club podcast the myself and my other two co-hosts will each take turns choosing a game we'll then break the game into sections and then each week we'll come together and like discuss that section specifically and at the end we kind of gauge how we're feeling about the game in that moment so it's really cool because we can kind of track how we're feeling about a certain video game throughout its progression uh and it's a ton of fun i mean if we do dive deep into spoilers for games that we're playing so we always tell our listeners that either play the game first and then come back and listen or you can play along with us uh but currently as of listening to this we are playing through mass effect it's a game that i love and i've i've played a ton of times and my other two co-hosts have never played so if you want to come and listen to two people play through mass effect in 2023 for the first time then come check us out i'm pretty sure you that'll still be going on this is coming this is dropping on march 19th for everyone oh, yeah, we'll on still the free be going feed. through it and uh march nice. 15th on the patreon feed so yeah please go check yes. out play along podcast i actually one of the series i listened to the most of yours was the chrono trigger one and uh I, I couldn't quite finish it because Kai was pissing me. <laughs> and and oh that was God. the problem. We we took that series as a as a learning experience too. Because a lot of people were like, we love the show. I'm enjoying this. It's hard to listen to you shit on my favorite game for like 11 weeks. And well, I was like, but no, that's no, no, fair. No. I understand. No, no, no. Kai should not apologize. It was Kai who didn't like it, right? Yeah. If I remember we all correctly. Like, yeah. We all had our own like gripes about it. But yeah, Kai no, usually no, no. doesn't like games of this era. No, no, he should not apologize. I disagree with him vehemently, but he should not apologize <laughs> for his opinion because that's what makes engaging. Yeah. Like the fact that I got upset about it, not a, like I'm not the type of person to be like to message somebody to be like, hey, I right. like I'm mad that I'm I'm mad that we don't have the same opinion. I wasn't actually mad, it was, but it's like that's good. It though. Like an it, emotion. He, it invoked an emotion. He shouldn't fucking apologize for anything like that. He did it. Uh, he doesn't like the game. That's okay. And that's kind of why okay. I it's liked it. And on top of that, it was just, it was kind of interesting because to be fair, Chrono Trigger is almost universally praised by anyone who's played it. So yeah. to hear someone dislike it so much was such an interesting, uh, as well as, as much as some of his criticisms, I, I think were flawed. I was mm. interesting to hear them and hear his perspective, perspective on it. So I, yeah. I, this was a very long winded way of saying, go listen to play along <laughs> pod because they have lots of cool <laughs> shit on there. Um, as usual for me, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at still loading pod on all of them. If you want to support the show, you can give it a five star rating or review on Apple podcasts, Spotify, or whichever podcasting app you use. Apparently that doesn't help. I I, re, I learned recently, and I've been repeating this on a lot of the episodes. That doesn't actually help with visibility. Apparently, reviews don't do that anymore. It doesn't help with the algorithm. Oh, but interesting. I don't know if that's true For or not. Spotify? Someone uh, Spotify definitely helps. I I don't think the okay. Apple Podcasts ones do. I I genuinely don't know. But I, what I always tell you, listeners and uh, people who've listened to the show before, it makes me feel warm and fuzzy, and I like yeah, feeling warm engagement. and fuzzy. So please, <laughs> nice. so please continue to write them if, if you so choose. Um, if you sub- want to support the show monetarily. <laughs> Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash still loading pod and for a dollar a month you'll get all the episodes a few days earlier at a better and higher bit rate for four dollars a month you'll get everything at the one dollar level plus two mini bonus episodes every month uh, one of which i explore one of those uh, handhelds that have 220 games in one all of them of Oh, wow, middling yeah. quality <laughs> it's, yeah. it's all over legality. the place <laughs> questionable yeah. legality it's it's a, it's a good time and for five dollars <laughs> a month you'll get all of that at the four dollar and one dollar tier plus access to still bonding which is a james bond podcast where two friends bond over 007 me and my friend erica are going through all the bond movies one at a time and no episode has been under two and a half hours so the, at the time this episode's <laughs> coming out i believe we'll have uh diamonds are forever will be out either already out or just coming out and 
let me tell you that movie is wild we haven't recorded the episode on it but that movie has some of the strangest villains you'll ever see so if any of that sounds interesting patreon.com slash still loading pod but of course the most important shout out is the bit by bit foundation the bit by bit foundation is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to put video games and video game consoles in the hands of kids receiving inpatient care at hospitals so if you want to support them go to bit by bit foundation.org and consider donating and that is all the time I have for you. Uh, this is the end of episode three for Mario Month 2023. Jared, Chazzy, thank you so much for joining me. Of course. Thanks for having Definitely, me, man. It was man. a blast. Yes, it really was. It was a great time. Had so much fun. And I will see you all next week for the final episode of Mario Month 2023. So thank you all for listening, and I will see you all next time.